it took me longer than I expected it to, not gonna lie, but still we are here, we are in the Soul River 2 endgame. Welcome back! This is what the Fire River is for and actually back when I said in the beginning of the Let's Play that every elemental river projectile has a puzzle use, I was wrong because there is no such use for uh, for the projectile of a fire river. And this is the first time something like this happens to me with these crystals. Like, it never happened before. This is the last time we are going to see this door closing. Finally! Farewell door, you will not be missed. These are actually the last um, legit enemies in the game that we are going to fight. But honestly, after that demon rush in the uh, on the way to the, to the stronghold, this is nothing. Yeah, have fun doing that. And now, the reveals are about to happen. Brace yourselves! Suddenly and inexplicably, I discovered the Reaver suspiciously laid across my path. Again, I sensed nothing of that temporal distortion, the peculiar sense of displacement I had felt when I encountered the Reaver in William's Chapel. Cornered here with the blade, I suffered the same nameless dread that I had experienced when Janos first presented the Reaver to me. I felt at once repelled by the blade, and yet overwhelmingly compelled to seize it. So, Razia, here we are finally. You have no choice but to confront me now. And I am not so foolish as I've let you believe. We have business to conclude. You knew I would lead the Seraphim to Janos, you vile bastard. You've been orchestrating my every move. <laughs> my destiny is an amusement to you. It was fun while it lasted. I think not, Raziel. Malik, do not let this creature leave. He poses a danger to the circle. Poor, deluded Raziel. Did you somehow imagine you had the guile to change history on me? I'm the time streamer. I knew your every intention before you did, you imbecile. <laughs> Lord Mobius, there is trouble within. The circle is under Hold attack. fast, Malik. This one is the real danger to us. What are you trying to concoct here, Mobius? You toxic creature. Did you imagine I'd simply allow you to run loose? Corrupting everything you encounter. I admit that I've underestimated you to this point, Mobius. It's a mistake I won't repeat. Wrong again, Raziel. Now, Malik, bolt the door. Using his staff to disable my wraith blade, Mobius effectively disarmed me, leaving me with only one choice of weapon. And yet I confess, 
It was not the lack of options, but blind rage that made me take up the Reaver. In my fury, it felt as though my hand had acted of its own will. And now, that same hand clutched the hilt with unyielding strength, and I felt a constrained tingling, a remote but palpable sense of longing, as the disabled Wraithblade tried vainly to embrace its physical twin. Wrong again? What the hell did Mobius mean there? Oh, and by the way, the Reaver behaves like a normal sword, as far as weapon mechanics are concerned. former brethren, in life as Seraphan, and in unlife as Cain's vampire sons, Melchiah and Zephon, the weakest of Cain's brood. These bastards had no idea what future lay in store for them, how they would become the very thing they so despised. The Reaver hummed with ravenous anticipation. Janos had called it a vampiric blade, endowed with the power to drain its victims of their lifeblood. I was eager to see what the Reaver would do to these two. And this marks the first time in the series when we see Raziel um, under influence, let's say. And he's clearly enjoying what's going on. And I suppose as you have noticed, or as most of you have realistically have already known, this is where Raziel is invulnerable because of the Reaver, and uh, it's one of those things that is, uh, depending on whether you like it or not, it's either a brilliant artistic move or a really freaking lazy game design. In my view, it's a bit of both. Notice how the Reaver actually drains blood from the bodies. Also, thanks to the invulnerability that the Reaver bestows upon Raziel, the block move is now actually useful. Because while normally it's still, uh, while normally the enemy's attacks still go through it and uh, Raziel still sustains damage, now Raziel cannot sustain damage, and the block prevents Raziel from getting flinch locked. still a vampire. I could sense the boundary between us dissolving. The Reaver was consumed with my rage, and I was intoxicated by its bloodlust. The blade had a vitalizing effect on me. My physical energy no longer decayed over time, and the wounds inflicted by my foes healed almost instantly. The Reaver had made me invincible. Next up, Rahab and Duma. If I can find the exit. This is the most skilled playthrough on Soul River, of Soul River 2 on YouTube, hands down. to reclaim the monster's black heart. You'll have to get to us first. My former brethren, Duma and Rahab, confronted me next. 
This all seems so elegantly choreographed. Exhilarated by the Reaver, I was drunk with revelations. I could finally appreciate the delicious irony of Kane's blasphemous private joke, and I reveled as I colluded with him across the centuries. For it was I who put these bastards in their tomb, thus providing the corpses for Cain to raise as his vampire sons a millennium from now. Oh yes, Raziel is clearly enjoying this. If Raziel wasn't invulnerable here, you could have said that um, every... Uh, that the later Seraphan warriors are more difficult. Because the uh, further you go, the faster they attack and the more hits they can take. But... Uh, there is no difficulty here. This thing is basically an exercise in tedium. I do try to sort of, kind of, use the uh, actual combat mechanics to kind of fight them skillfully, and it does speed the process up a bit. Unfortunately, only a bit. Down, two to go. Get back to the pit you crawled from, demon. And here at last was my brother Turel, who along with Duma would bear me into the abyss without questioning Cain's command. So dutiful and righteous, even as a vampire. I guess some habits die hard. The vampire Tyrell had eluded my vengeance. The Saraphan Tyrell would not. I just noticed that uh, their helmets have horns. What is the purpose of these? Or if there is no purpose and they are just symbolic of something, then what are they supposed to represent? If anything. I wonder how this would have uh, gone if Raziel was not indestructible in these parts of the game. So all five of Raziel's brethren are down. There is only one Seraphan Inquisitor, Seraphan Warrior or future Lieutenant left. And by the way, this is just here to show you that there are no murals here and that this uh, chamber is absolutely empty and why on earth is it even locked if so. Okay, so there's one Seraphon left. And I suppose you know where this is going, isn't it? filthy parasite and reclaim his foul heart. You're a righteous fiend, aren't you? 
Apparently I am. No, vampire. This is where it ends. But you won't be leaving this room. Now, let's finish this. I'll make it mercifully quick. As you did for Janos? <laughs> no, that beast had eluded us for far too long. It would have been a shame to end him too quickly. It's ironic, really. The great Janos Ordrin turned out to be no challenge at all. Thanks to you. Did you hear his cowardly screams when I tore that black heart out of his carcass? So, Redeemer and Destroyer. That title, of course, has absolutely nothing to do with this fight, but I believe that it fits here as well. I also like how it takes room in a place with... Uh, I mean, it takes place in a room, I'm sorry, with uh, this Ouroboros on the floor. Ouroboros number one, Raziel fighting Raziel, obviously. The second Ouroboros is Raziel, I mean the rated Raziel, going from being Seraphan to despising them as a vampire, then back to revering them as a wraith, and now back to hating them again. Yes. Raziel is very consistent. And there's the third Ouroboros, the third full circle, which I shall not talk about. You're going to see everything once uh, one of the Raziels is dead. I mean, dead again, I guess. Unfortunately, this fight is quite tedious as uh, Raziel can take a lot of hits and... I mean, the human Raziel can take a lot of hits and... Uh, he's very hard to... Act, well, hit, because he blocks everything and his attacks are very uh, fast and they're hard to avoid or even sometimes block. Once again, it does not increase the difficulty because there is no difficulty at this point. But, well, it should not have been that long. And I'm actually making this fight uh, a lot faster than it normally is for most. Yeah, by this point, the novelty of uh, the idea of fighting your former self, it kind of wears off and you just want to get to be done with this as quickly as possible. It also doesn't help that I'm not really used to using a weapon to fight, as if you have followed the playthrough, you've seen that I kill just about everything with uh, with the claws. And now for the reveals. I renounce you. <gasps> So it ends. My history comes full circle. Sensing its twin, the Wraith Blade uncoiled itself from me, and instead wound lovingly around its former self. I felt its grip loosen, and as the blade left me, its absence chilled me more than its presence ever had. A foreboding sense of emptiness and loss stole over me, and a terrible revelation gathered like a storm at the edge of my awareness. With all other foes exhausted, the conjoined blades turned themselves on me, and I realized, finally, why I had sensed nothing when Janos offered me the blade. The Reaver was never forged to be a soul-stealing weapon. The ravenous, soul-devouring entity trapped in the blade was, and always had been, me. 
This is why the blade was destroyed when Cain tried to strike me down. The Reaver could not devour its own soul. The paradox shattered the blade. So, this was my terrible destiny. To play out this purgatorial cycle for all eternity. I could not bear it. Despair overwhelmed me. You! Are you enjoying this game? Oh. Don't fight it, Raziel. Give in to it. Oh. What is this? Your destiny for me all along? Trust me. I felt myself weakening. Unable to hold on any longer. The Reaver was too strong. The compulsion to simply let go. Too great. And then, a growing sense of vertigo and the familiar displacement. The paradoxical moment when my twinned soul hovered both outside and inside the Reaver blade. This was the instant. The glimmer of temporal distortion Cain had been counting on all along. This was the edge of the coin. The minute flicker of probability upon which Cain had gambled everything. Now you are free to reclaim your true destiny, Raziel. Behind Cain's eyes, I could see new memories blooming and dying as history labored to reshuffle itself around this monumental obstruction. And I could see by the dawning horror on his face that perhaps we had strained history too far this time. That by trying to alter my fate, he may have introduced a fatal paradox. My God. The Hilton! We walked right into their trap. Raziel, Janos must stay dead. But Cain's warning was lost as I slipped into the spirit realm, too weak to maintain my physical form. And there, waiting for me as always, was the Reaver, the Wraithblade, my own soul, twinned and bound eternally to me. And I realized that I could never escape my terrible destiny. I had merely postponed it. History abhors a paradox. And now we know what Raziel's destiny is. Raziel is, in fact, the Soul Reaver. Had there been no Cain here, had Raziel killed him back when, Raziel would have been forced to relive this circular destiny over and over and over again. But now, this paradox, the third paradox, has been created, and thus we are entering the fourth timeline. The repercussions of this temporal distortion will be dealt with in Blood Omen 2 and in Defiance. The next Legacy of Cain Let's Play will be Blood Omen 2, because it's the game that is uh, that was released right after Soul Reaver 2. And I would like to thank everyone who followed the Let's Play, or rather the Let's Plays of Soul Reaver and Soul Reaver 2. I would like to thank everyone who participated in the thread, everyone who commented. I would like to especially thank those who took their time to fix my mistakes in English, I know I make them all the time. And with this, thank you for watching, thank you for joining me on this journey, and I will see you in Blood Omen 2.